Hey guys, Bugcat7 here. Okay, it is Friday, September 27, 2019, and I want to thank you for visiting the Stonewall Research Channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Alrighty, gang. Well, we're going to keep on with the Giants here because, uh, or I like to call them large hominids because it seems to be more of a scientific classification you know, a more precise use of the language than, let's say, giants, uh, you know, just my personal opinion, but seems to be a classification because we have a variety of these types of uh, large hominids around the world with unusual skulls, etc., people who are slightly more robust, which is, uh, you know, the euphemism they use for larger in size and you know when you hear about these examples of the people putting the skull over their head or the jawbone up to theirs and it's bigger okay so you know the euphemism is bigger if you didn't get it by their euphemism there and just to remind people on my channel i have you know this um video that I did, Elongated Skulls, Lebanon to Korea, where you can just see this fascinating variety of these skulls. I think these skulls happen to be in Russia. And um, just, you know, it's just phenomenal uh, stuff there, actual physical evidence and, you know, the reports of the um, archaeology, etc. And, you know, it's just undeniable and just... It's just all there to see, and, you know, you just don't want to sort of address the whole thing, but um, we're going to talk about it actually state by state, and, you know, this way we can talk about these accounts, and I'll add my two cents, but I want to go over it state by state because I think it's relevant and it's pertinent to this topic because you want to hear about all the accounts, whatever they may be, they need to be broken down, analyzed in whatever shape or form that, you know, you want to do it. But, um, you know, all I can do is read these accounts to you, but I'm going to take it state by state. Of course, I'm going to add my two cents in there, you know, going by, you know, what I've researched about it so far. So, you know, I think it's just for posterity or whatever, but... um before I even get to that, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, before I suffer or have a senior moment or suffer from the Mandela effect or something like that, but I was eating this uh, Three Musketeers bar. It's kind of hard to see, I guess. There you go. Three Musketeers, there doesn't happen to be any musketeers on the packaging here i don't i don't see any musketeers you know i'm a big dumas fan you know man in the iron mask and three musketeers as a kid i think i read those books when i was like 12 years old that's why they gave me sort of accelerated um you know studies but i don't i see any musketeers on here and I could have sworn that there were um, musketeers on the free musketeer bar. And I went looking for it because I don't, I don't want to suffer a senior moment or anything. But, um, yeah, you know, the packaging um, used to have the actual, you know, there was three musketeers, but, you know, as you know from Dumas' book, The Three Musketeers, D'Artagnan was the fourth musketeer, obviously, but I know it was the three musketeers on the three musketeer bar wrapper, but it doesn't appear to be any on there now. I guess kids can't see guys with swords or anything dressed in, you know, period, you know, appropriate, you know, clothing i don't know is it bad for kids to see i mean do kids watch like the most violent cartoons like dragon ball c which happens to be my favorite but not really for kids i mean you know it's very violent but i i don't know he read all about violence right it wasn't a particularly violent kid but um 
yeah, you know, there's no musketeers on there now, but, you know, I guess kids can see and play violent video games and watch cartoons and whatnot that are just incredibly violent. But um, no musketeers on the musketeer bar. Speaking of that, I like the Gene Kelly one the best. I was about Gene Kelly was good because he was a dancer, and if you didn't know about the real thing, is here's Simon Shaw is the power of art. Caravaggio was uh, an amazing, amazing painter. He's also a killer, apparently, and here he is doing double swords or knife and sword. You know that's like a pet technique. I bet you he was real. He was like certain death to cross swords with that guy, but of course he got killed by a sword too, so. All right, let's look at the Giants state by state, and you know, look at the ones in Maine first. These are, you know, just short articles and things like that, but it's very interesting what's said in here, and of course when I looked at it, I was like, oh, you know, this would be interesting to go through these, you know, on a state by state. So we're gonna start with, you know, Maine, the most, you know, the most Eastern and Northern state, and in the New England area, and of course, there's all sorts of stuff from here, but just so fascinating to me is what they say about it, and uh, it takes a little while, it's a slow website here, but um, I want to go through these because it's just so fascinating. Okay, so these are the stone-like giants of Maine, the Gen Asqua. The Gen No Squa, or Get No Squa, I guess. You know, forgive me if I'm butchering that, Native peoples, but here is like a picture drawn by a Native a girl of these what they call stone giants. And it's just interesting to me, they had pointy heads according to them, you know, what they show in this depiction here, but. What's interesting to me is that, you know, um, they're, they're called stone giants, and is this because they were stone, which I think is what is often thought by people like L.A. Marzulli and, you know, or whatever the folklore goes back, they say stone giants or whatever, but... What I'm thinking is, is are these the people who were moving all around these, you know, large stones up in Vermont with all the uh, dolmen up there and everything and the standing stones, what they call the glacial erratics and the leaning stones and, uh, you know, perch stones that you know, weigh thousands of pounds. I mean, is this what it's being referred to? I think so, what they mean by stone giants. So, this is a historical drawing by a Haudenosaunee, Iroquois child, showing the Guinness Squaw, or a stone giant, chasing all the Haudenosaunee braids. Note the pointed head and stick wielding characteristics of the creature. The image from the mythology of all nations by Lewis Herbert Gray, George Whitmore, and John Hart. Published by Marshall Jones Company in 1916. And here is a modern day, but you know, done in traditional style rendition of the stone giants, which you know is a caricature. A recent uh, reproduction of a traditional Haudenosaunee ceremonial stone giant or Gunasqua mask as crafted by the Wolf Den, Native American artists and crafters. Okay, so, you know, they take it how you want, you know, I'm saying it's a caricature. But it's interesting that they call them stone giants and they had these pointy heads and they're obviously larger, chasing them around with sticks. Even though I think it's, you know, they had more than sticks. But, just interesting what they said in there. Okay, so here's in Monmouth, Maine, seven and a half foot skeleton. And some of these are accounts by local townspeople, etc., etc. I think this is one of them. Monmouth Giants, seven and a half foot skeleton. Not many years ago, a massive Indian skeleton was exhumed at East Monmouth by proceeding carefully in its location in Maine there in this county, measuring almost seven and a half feet in height. The skull is said to be as large as a common iron tea kettle. 
Mammoth Giant, seven and a half foot skeleton. History of Monmouth and Wales, Maine. Harry Heyman, by published by Cochran, 1894, page nine. Okay, Jim Vieira, I guess, uh, this is Jim Vieira's, it's attributed to Jim Vieira's research, okay, so, interesting there, so all the way up in Maine here, we have these giants here, giant arrowheads, I don't know whether this is found by the author of, or the, uh, moderator of the site or somebody who contributed but this is a giant arrowhead the, the slate implement shown here is over nine inches long found in maine very thick okay so here's the drawing of it and here's the actual article or i guess the same one and showing other smaller arrowheads it would be have to be for a massive spear showing us in a car, modern car, Chevy. All right, so pretty big to be thrown around, and you know you have to have the strength to wield these weapons. You know anybody who's slung a sledgehammer like I have knows it's a difficult thing to do all day long. This was found yesterday in Southern Illinois. There was a lot of snow on the ground, but a bare spot gave up this piece. I've never seen anything like it, and I have no idea what it is. I did not find but was found in a field that I have hunted many times for me. Okay, so some account and some pictures by somebody of a giant spearhead, which is recounted by William A. Ritchie as I go over my video, prove it. They found many, many artifacts such as those, oversized items, whether they be, you know, knives, spears, um, uh, often harpoons, which, you know, you find these people buried with harpoons in the middle of the wilderness, as I say again and again, especially about my Maori side, a lot of these themed areas with the serpent, I often say it's got to be a sea serpent because you have all these other sort of whales and other things, but you know, it's just people like to argue with me, especially about my sea turtle, I found a megalithic sea turtle, and um, I have a lot of slack for that. And why is it just a box or painted turtle? Because it's got flippers. But, in any case. Um, peer reviewed 8 footer is a duplicate. Um, 7 footer from Kennebunkport, where the bushes were from. But, you know, they're Texans too, I guess. I, I don't know. You can never figure it out. They're from Maine, but they're Texans because they own land with oil on it. Under a skeleton with Indian arrow in skull. This is an interesting one. Three skeletons believed... Oh, shoot. Sorry about that. Damn it. Three skeletons believed to be those of early American settlers, which I find interesting, were unearthed here by workmen leveling some land near an old fort erected during the War of 1912. I don't know, 1912? I don't recall War of 1912. I think they meant 1812. Yes, that's what it says in the article here. It's a typo there. Two apparently were victims of Indian massacres or wars. Embedded in the skull of one of the skeletons was an Indian arrow. The tip of the skull of, of the second was shipped off cleanly as if done by a tomahawk held in a well-trained hand. The third skeleton was that of a man seven feet tall. It is believed that the bodies were buried in an old cemetery on the spot and that the graves were covered over by earth thrown up when the fort excavations were being made. Maybe. I wish, you know, this is, whenever you see these things in the past, of course, you know, and people giving these articles, depending on who they are and, you know, how honest they are or how naive they are, they're going to say things like this because it, it has to follow the narrative that everybody's given. So it can't go beyond those parameters because if it does, then we're talking about something else. So 
this is why people said these things and they could have got a lot of things wrong and you know not being professional archaeologists or academics or even physicians or anything there are more seven footers in burial mounds across the united states than there are in the nba it's interesting what this guy says in this article there are thousands of articles of giants or greater ancestors in news reports across America. It can be demonstrated that in ancient times that people in the past are hard. Listen to what he says, which I've, I've often said, the reasons why these prejudices against these people and people will be jealous of them, scared of them, feared them, whatever. It can be demonstrated that in ancient times that people in the past are bigger, better, faster, stronger, and smarter in the past. These reports give clues like the place, Kennebunkport, like a location marker in an old fort. So research does not end with a newspaper article, it only begins with one. There is a site of an old fort in Kennebunkport, Maine, which may have more giants beneath its floors. Okay. And a bunch of other articles that concern this or whatever, I guess, reported it. But there's the article there, and it's just what the guy said about it, about these people being smarter, faster, bigger, stronger, and everything. And you have all this stonework in the Northeast, which indicates a, the, the whole contiguous stone walls throughout the regions. I'm trying to explain to people of how it's contiguous. So... What does that tell you about the nature of the construction of it and how it was organizing there if it was all completely contiguous? With no openings in the walls in a lot of instances, but there were places with openings in the wall, but you have to understand these terms. And all these giant rocks moved around all over the place. Just think about it for in terms of being bigger, faster, stronger, whatever it is, and how these things were built. You can't compare it to us if you're dealing with people who are actually bigger in size. Not only taller, but bigger in size and therefore strength. And depending on how the gravity was in the past, you know, before the great cataclysm. And then, again, this article is saying about there being colonists or whatever. Suppose it was one of these giants, okay, or these large hominid humanoids here in the Northeast with two companions that were of European descent, but from thousands of years ago when they record the Adena being here. Okay, the Adena were the people with the large vaulted craniums that were here apparently and got buried in the mounds, all the Adena mounds, all the way up into uh, eastern Pennsylvania. So, you know, look, you have to think about these things and you just got to pay attention. But let's go over some more here. There's just a few more. We'll get through this. But I'm going to go state by state because it's just interesting what is said in these things. And, you know, if you, you can just take the word of L.A. Marzulli or Steve Quayle or whatever, I think is you're not getting enough of the story or getting it correctly, that's for sure. As I've called L.A. Marzulli out on, on Coast to Coast. Bath, magnificent specimens. Bath, Maine, July 25th. Special, it's, uh, it doesn't say what the date is here, maybe at the bottom. It is likely the visitors to the Tercentennial, either at Bath or Popham, which Popham uh, Colony, which I debunk, Popham Colony was a scam, was a money scam, never even existed, may have been a privilege of seeing skeletons of the two of the magnificent specimens of physical manhood, such as the American Indian of the days of the Sabeno, Samoset, Nahanada, Sassanoa, really were okay so those are the old ancient tribes in maine there okay at least the ones that they know about and whoever came before them the natives didn't really know about they knew there were people they just didn't know exactly who they were which being interpreted is that which james perkins dug the cellar of his house at popham beach on the knoll next to the riverside hotel the skeletons were on earth who were in life from six to seven feet in height, giants in fact. Mr. Perkins took one of the jaw bones of these Indians and placed it on his own face. It completely encased his jaw and he's a pretty good sized man. 
Mr. Perkins gathered Mr. Perkins gathered all the bones of these two skeletons together and placed them in a barrel and reinterred them so. It is proposed to dig up the barrel and have the bones set together to illustrate what manner of inhabitants Weymouth and Poppin discovered in the earliest years of the 17th century when they arrived in this section of Maine. A common find of giant humans looking like it fits anywhere ex else except for the academic road to man. Seven-footers are rare today, but not so much in the past. Entire tribes and races have been found, although this information is unknown to the public. There are no isolated cases, no anomalies of giants, just a thorough and complete record in every state from Maine to the California coast. It is the correct view of history, greater ancestry. Okay. <clears throat> so that is true, and if you can imagine that there was some country around this world right now, today, all right, that had people in it that were bigger in size overall, okay, so let's say seven foot people who are also bigger in size, monster, just a whole race of people like that in one country around this world. How much you want to bet your eye that they would be being attacked by anybody and everybody on this planet for some reason or another? Something would have to be made up about it. Because I'm telling you, our record of the past with big people and pygmy tribes still were wiped out by the whole people, genocided, because we didn't like them. We just, we don't like that. And, you know, in our deep, dark history. And that's why these people got wiped out. Just as simple as that, all the way up into, like, modern times. Stuff like that's been going on. Okay, let's get to these last couple of articles, and that's it. But some of these states have, like... An unbelievable amount of articles and other things. Okay. So this is uh, 1922. Sunday, December 24th, 1922. Bones vi viewed by scientists. Main professor believes remains found at Pasadena of ancient origin human skulls and bones uncovered in the shell mounds at Pasadena estimate the states by Workman Friday are thought to be the Indian tribe that roamed in this section of the country hundreds of years before the Americans discovered by white men, is the opinion of Professor War Norman Wallace Lerman, curator and librarian of the Knox Academy of Art and Science, Thomason, Maine, who is wintering here. Okay, so you got this... Uh, guy who's the curator and librarian of the Academy of Art and Sciences there who examined the thing or whatever in 1922, so it's not, you know, the uh, 19th century, you know, so 20th century now, and, um, you know, he's good. This guy, again, is, you know, educated. He's going by what he knows, okay? Hundreds of years, thousands of years. We're talking about giant peoples. We're talking at the time of the Adena, somewhere in, like, 2400 B.C., you know, to 3000 B.C., you know, within that area, according to their timeline and their dating or whatever. So, you know, wherever this giant race is, it would be pretty... Uh, easy to assume that somewhere in these areas in datings and times, maybe even a little later on with Galena Canyon, et cetera, et cetera, so, and the Lovelock people, so we, you know, it could be a hundred, it could be thousands of years, all right, but, you know, this guy's talking from what he knows in 1922, giant race, Lerman, who is also editor of the main Naturalist Journal, a monthly periodical, examined the bones in the downtown offices of the Pasadena Estates late Saturday afternoon, and in his preliminary inspection, volunteered the belief that one of the two skulls was in the possession of Jack of Jack Taylor was that of, of a man over eight feet tall. Further examination of the bones 
would be made by the main scientist, and he believes that considerable data of importance will be gathered within the next week. The bones were in an excellent state of preservation. They were encased in clay-like receptacles that crumbled at the touch. The skulls, however, were solid. The jaws were square and massive, the teeth whole and void of cavities. The cheekbones were high. Foreheads high, which is, you know, another way of saying these vaulted cranium people just like the Adena people. Foreheads high. Sand had worked his way into several of the large arm and leg bones during the course of time while one of the skulls were lined with a heavy mold. The foreheads were high and not receding as would be expected of age-old human remains. So they expected that in age-old, probably from looking at the Adena. It's probably common knowledge that, you know, guys like Alice Herdlisch could have just kept the lid on that. He didn't want any of his stuff to get out. Professor Lerman displayed a keen interest in the find and asked permission to keep for several days the bones uncovered at Pasadena. The shell mounds were torn down by Negro laborers who used the shells surfacing the roads. Startled by their finds, the Negroes refused to continue their work when the bones were uncovered. Sunday, the 7th, 24th, 1922. Okay, so that's what went on there. And, you know, just more evidence of eight-foot-tall people who lived at one time or humanoids. Okay. Swan Island Giants. The site is not that fast, which is unfortunate because you like to get to these articles fast and not very long. Swan Island Giants, a race of much larger statue than the Indian of today. Quote, at that part of the island called the North, when the first settlers came, there were five different places plainly seen where the in where the Indians that their set downs are villages. There was another at the middle head one in reed in the reed field near the eastern shore and several around old harbor in these ancient shell heaps have been found by men of our present day flint arrowheads and hatchets which must have taken much skill and patience in making okay which cw saram found later on that people practicing this skill of doing this thing could create these things in no time flat once they became accustomed to doing it and perfecting their skills at it it became easy for them and there's a person that Saram notes that did it in real life at the time and was able to make um, arrowheads and spearheads and all sorts of things with the flint being, you know, flint stuff like in, you know, minutes. So it just it requires skill. These must have been their implements used in hunting, perhaps in warfare. The promontory where the lighthouse stands near the entrance to Old Harbor is called Hokomo, Hokomok, a name given to it by the Indians long before the white men came. It may have been their name for this locality. Near to Hokomok Head is a point of land extending into the harbor called Burying Point. A large number of Indian skeletons were unearthed by the plow. They were found most plenty near the middle head and near the carrying place, quote unquote, which places their burying grounds, which places were their burying grounds. The skeletons were found just beneath the turf and were of large size, showing a race of much larger stature than the Indian of today. This tribe made irregular visits to the island for many years after the white settlers came, but of late, since their number has so decreased, they have ceased altogether. 1898, A History of Swans Island, Maine by H.W. Small, M.D., published in 1898. Okay, so... There's giants in every state, but this was the ones of Maine that I wanted to bring to you from this, uh, you know, site where they gathered these articles and accounts and tales and whatever, and I just want to go through it state by state because every state has all these giants, and not every state has dolmens and stone walls. California, which has many, many accounts of giant um, skeletal remains, 
has lots of walls over there, similar to the Northeast, and they're just, you know, unexplainable. I actually talked to the researcher on the phone. I forget this gentleman's name now. I'm sorry that I do, but he had called me on the phone years ago and explained to me that, you know, I he needed to tell me some things that the in walls that he was studying in California there, these inexplicable stone walls, similar to the ones in the Northeast, were far older than I could possibly imagine. So that's what he said, and he insisted upon it too. And I was, you know, I was hard, I was, you know, I wasn't placing dates on anything, but he wanted to make sure that I wasn't making any mistakes in my estimate of when these walls were actually built. And probably at a far earlier date than we can possibly imagine. So, anyway, guys, I just thought you might want to hear those stories from Maine, and uh, we'll take it state by state. This is just the first one. We got to cover a few more, but I just, I got to add my two cents where I think it needs to be added. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. We'll cover another state in another video, and uh, if you liked it, please hit the like button, and uh, Buckcat7 signing out. Peace. What the fuck? <laughs>